good evening everyone and today's session would be whether recovery evidence by itself is a substantive evidence and like we have already doing a lot of series with judges b ram kumar a former judge from kerala high court and his short topics have been very well received because they are concise well and to the point with illustrative illustrations as well as the judicial precedents on that we are always enlightened when never just as ram kumar comes on our platform we have also seen that his writing skills various topics of the live law are also well received and we are really indebted on behalf of beyond law clc and all those participants that he keeps on sharing his blessings and knowledge with us so when we discuss about whether recovery evidence by itself is a substantive evidence a natural corollary question which arises out in the mind of a student of law or a lawyer or a judge is whether recovery evidence falling under section 27 of the indian evidence act is a substantive evidence or a corroborative evidence yeah. since there are few youngsters we would also ask you uh, not ask you we would request you to make us understand what is actually section 27 and then uh, we can take this question over to you sir thank you good evening uh, friends see the whether the, the the question posed by you is boils down to this whether recovery evidence by itself is substantive evidence now i have already spoken on the topic of section 27 of the evidence act which has been treated as a proviso to sections 25 and 26 of the evidence act all of you know that a, any confession by, made by a person accused of an offence to a police officer cannot be used against him because of the interdict under section 25 of the evidence act likewise any confession made by an accused person while in the custody of a police officer is also tabooed by section 26 of the evidence act then comes section 27 of the evidence act see the, the section is very uh, very rarely only you find a section the starting as a proviso normally you you will find a substantive se section and then a proviso to that section here the section itself starts as a proviso section 27 i'll read the section how much of information received from accused may be proved provided that that is a proviso to section 25 and 26 25 says no confession made to a police officer shall be used against an accused person 26 no confession made while in the custody of a police officer is admissible then comes 27 provided that when any fact is deposed to as discovered in consequence of information received from a person accused of any offence in the custody of a police officer so much of such information whether it amounts to a confession or not as relates distinctly to the fact thereby discovered may be proved a beautifully drafted section and beautifully explained by sir john beaumont in the celebrated decision ulukuri kotaya versus emperor air 1947 privy council page 67 air 1947 privy council page 67 four law lords presided over the case and sir john beaumont gave the is the author of the judgment now if the uh, what is substantive evidence question is whether recovery falling under section 27 is substantive evidence or not what do you mean by substantive evidence substantive evidence is a, is an evidence which can stand by itself it can stand on its own without the aid of any other evidence as distinct from a corroborative evidence corroborative evidence means evidence which has to support some main evidence now substantive evidence is an evidence which which has an independent existence it can stand by itself now the question is whether a recovery falling under section 27 can constitute substantive evidence or whether it is only a corroborative evidence now the answer to this question can only be in the negative in the majority of cases but positive in certain limited 
categories of cases. The answer to this question is given by Pulukuri Kotaya itself, by Sir John Beaumont. Where he is, the, the learned judge has conceived all possible arguments based on section 27. Beautiful judgment. Now, um, now, supposing, I will say that the answer can be negative in most of the cases. It cannot be substantive evidence in most of the cases. Supposing an accused is having in his possession or is concealing in his room an unlicensed firearm or a narcotic substance, that, was, that by itself, his possession or custody of the unlicensed firearm or narcotic drug by itself is an offense. Because Arms Act 1959 says no person shall keep in possession a firearm without a license. Likewise, the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act 1985 says that no person shall possess a narcotic drug. And narcotic drug has been defined. Supposing a, a person is found to be in possession of op opium, and he has concealed it in, in his room, then he can be said to be in possession of narcotic drug in contravention of the provisions of the NDPS Act. Likewise, if a person is found to be in possession of an unlicensed gun kept by him, kept concealed by him, hidden by him, then he can be said to be in possession of a, 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 a firearm contrary to the provisions of the Arms Act 1959. That itself is an offence. It is in those limited categories of cases that the mere possession or concealment can amount to an offence. Therefore, it is only in those cases that recovery evidence becomes substantive evidence. It can stand on its own independent evidence. There need not be any corroborative evidence. But in the good majority of cases, what happens is the accused says that that knife, that dagger, I have concealed in such and such place. And consequent on his statement, the police party, either led by the accused or without the accused, goes to that particular place disclosed by the accused and takes out the weapon from the place of concealment. In such a case, what is it that is proved by 27 recovery? What is proved is Accused had concealed or hidden a knife, at a dagger at a particular place. And he alone was knowing that place of concealment. Consequent on his disclosure statement, that dagger is recovered. From that, can we uh, jump into the conclusion that he is the murderer in a murder case? No. The 27 recovery only proved that this man was having the exclusive knowledge about the place of concealment of that weapon. That's all. Then, whether that weapon was used in the commission of the offence for which he is charged will have to be separately proved. Therefore, this recovery evidence is only a corroborative piece of evidence, not a substantive evidence, because it does not prove the offence. The offence is not proved. Only his knowledge about the place of concealment of the weapon alone has been proved. That is why, in good majority of cases, what is proved is the place of concealment of the weapon and the recovery of the weapon. From that alone, court cannot jump into the conclusion that he is the person who committed the murder. No. That will have to be separately used. And his confession that I, the, the dagger with which I killed so-and-so, the dagger with which I killed so-and-so, that part, that confession is not admissible. That is a confession which is not admissible. That will have to be excluded from consideration. This is the beautiful uh, the, uh, verdict of Pulukuri Kotaya. Now, hence a recovery of any object or substance on the basis of the disclosure statement of the accused from a place where he has hidden them would itself establish complicity in a case where the disclosure the, is about the possession or concealment of a uh, unlicensed drug, um, um, firearm or a narcotic drug. But nothing and nothing further need be proved in that case. He has already shown his possession of a unlicensed firearm or a narcotic drug. 
supposing what is concealed by him is only a dagger the recovery evidence only proves that the accused had hidden the dagger at a secret place from that alone it cannot be straight away concluded that he is the murderer or the culprit the prosecution will have to further prove that the dagger recovered on the basis of the disclosure statement of the accused was used by the accused for the commission of the offence this proof can either be by direct or circumstantial evidence now let us examine the relevant passage in pulikuri kotaya there are two passages one towards the end of paragraph 11 this is what justice uh, law sir john beaumont speaking for the privy council observed except in cases in which the possession or concealment of an object constitute the gist of the offence charge except in those limited number of different category of cases it can seldom happen that information relating to the discovery of a fact forms the foundation of the prosecution case so except in those limited category of cases it cannot form the the, the uh, basis for foundation or basis for the prosecution case it is only one link in the chain of proof and the and uh, the other links must be and the other links must be in a manner allowed by law this recovery of the weapon or uh, for example it can be weapon it can be dead body it can be blood stained clothes and any such incriminating material recovery of such material will only show that he had concealed it at such and such place and he had knowledge about that place of concealment which was not known to the police that's all but from that alone supposing a dead body is recovered from that alone you cannot jump into the presumption into the conclusion that he is the murderer no that will have to be separately proved by the prosecution again towards the end of paragraph 10 of pulikuri kotaya the privy council speaking through sir john beaumont observed as follows information supplied by a person in custody that i will produce a knife concealed in the roof of my house does not lead to the discovery of a knife it is not discovery of a knife discovery of the place of concealment of the knife that's all and uh, very beautifully stated knives were discovered many years ago it leads to the discovery of the fact that a knife is concealed in the house of the informant to his knowledge and if the knife is proved to have been used in the commission of the offence the fact discovered is very rare therefore what is recovered is only a knife regard the regarding the place of concealment of which was known to the accused and accused alone but from that alone you cannot jump to the conclusion that he is the murderer the the fact that the knife was used for the commission of murder for commission of the offence of murder will have to be separately proved by the prosecution the beautifully stated by sir john beaumont in ulukuri kotaya this is the reason why the supreme court of india had also made the following pertinent observations number 1 mere recovery of dead body either pointed out by the accused or recovered as a result of the disclosure statement made by him would not necessarily lead to the conclusion that he committed murder there should be other substantive evidence or corroborative circumstances from which the court can raise a presumption that the accused was the offender beautiful the same principle has been beautifully stated by the supreme court speaking through justice jail kapoor the other judge was regubar dayal paragraph 9 of can be can be carson jadav versus state of gujarat air 1966 supreme court 821 corresponding to 1966 criminal law journal 605 jail kapoor is the author of the case second second case the discovery is a weak kind of evidence and cannot be wholly relied upon and a conviction such a serious matter cannot be based upon the discovery once the discovery fails there would be literally nothing which would support the prosecution case beautifully stated by justice v s sirpurkar in paragraph 21 of mani versus state of tamil nadu 
AIR 2008 Supreme Court 1021. PP Navalekar, Justice PP Navalekar and Justice V. S. Sirpurkar, Justice Sirpurkar being the author of the judgment. Third instance is a recent case which was decided this month on 11 8 2003 in paragraph 22. of manoj kumar soni versus state of madhya pradesh criminal appeal number 1030 bar 2023 judges are justice s ravindra bhat and deepankar datta justice deepankar datta is the author of the judgment the aforesaid passage in paragraph 22 of the verdict the learned judges have quoted the aforesaid passage in pulukuri kota yeah then in paragraph 21 it is observed as follows a doubt looms can disclosure statement per se unaccompanied by any supporting evidence be deemed adequate to secure a conviction we find it impossible although disclosure statements hold significance as a contributing factor in unriddling a case in our opinion they are not so strong a piece of evidence sufficient on its own and without anything more to bring home the charges beyond reasonable doubt no other uh, enunciation is required but there is one one stray sentence unfortunately made by a three judge bench of the supreme court in paragraph 16 of bijinder alias mandar versus state of haryana ar 2022 supreme court Four double six, corresponding to 2022 Volume One SCC 92. Three judges and uh, Justice N V Ramana, Chief Justice Surya Kant, Hima Kohli. So I have the three judges. The author of the judgment is Surya Kant, Justice Surya Kant. The observation, the observation is, it may be true that at times the court can convict and likely to be mis- misunderstood, likely to be misunderstood. because as uh, we have discussed as we have seen it is only in the few minority of cases where possession or concealment of the contraband substance by the accused itself is an offense in such a case alone the recovery evidence can form the sole basis that is substantive evidence without any corroborative piece of evidence for recording a conviction not in cases like this for that so every everyone reading the judgment in that uh, manoj kumar soni will have to uh, 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 i'm sorry everyone reading the judgment in bijinder versus alias mandar versus state of haryana year 2022 supreme court 466 will have to bear this in mind that though there is an observation that it can form sole basis for a conviction uh, in that particular facts of their case that observation was unwarranted and it may go a long way uh, towards uh, helping the prosecution in a case where there is only a recovery of the place of concealment recovery of the object or the um, based on the knowledge of the accused regarding place of concealment this distinction has to be borne in mind the purpose of this webinar is to explain this distinction there uh, there is an only a few a minority category of cases where recovery evidence can form substantive evidence and in the good majority of cases recovery evidence can only form a corroborative piece of evidence and there will have to be other evidence other corroborative evidence to confirm the 27 recovery that is why it is always said that 27 recovery by itself cannot form the sole basis for a conviction except in those limited categories of cases that's all this is my the purpose of this short webinar thank you friends uh, thank you sir uh, as usual it was so insightful uh, i just thought like any other participant who is watching that maybe we'll be only discussing section 70 27 but the subtle difference between substantive evidence and the corroborative evidence that will help the participants to understand these this facet in a much much better way thank you sir